Good afternoon. I'm Roger Gregory, Chief Judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. Welcome to our Constitution Day celebration. Constitution Day was enacted into law in 2004. The legislation was sponsored by Senator Robert C. Byrd of West Virginia. We are very proud of that because that's a Fourth Circuit state. And he said that the vitality of our Constitution will remain if we take the efforts to keep the vision of its framers alive. And that's what we thought about when we decided to celebrate Constitution Day this way. That vision and vitality can best be displayed by our young people, the precious gift of generations to come. And therefore, we want to display and highlight their talents. So that's why today we're going to give you the best of the best, these young people and their brilliant thoughts and their minds. Senator Byrd, when he spoke about Constitution Day, he went on to say that the Constitution will long live if we personally commit ourselves to learn, to understand, and to preserve the governing principles that are so clearly and powerfully in our remarkable Constitution. These remarkable young people will show you that they are engaged, informed, and involved in making real all of those principles that are enshrined in our Constitution. And that will be the long legacy to all of us. Yes, we the people. So sit back and enjoy Constitution Day. Thank you, young people, for continuing to inform and inspire all of us. The Fourth Circuit established its high school essay contest in 2017 as a way for students to express their own views while interacting with societal issues and legal history. The award ceremony is traditionally held in September near the annual commemoration of Constitution Week. 60 years ago, in his inaugural address, President John F. Kennedy uttered a profound and enduring challenge regarding citizenship. And so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you Ask what you can do for your country. As Kennedy recognized, citizenship carries with it both rights and responsibilities. This commemoration guided our writing prompts for this year's contest. What are the responsibilities of citizenship and how do those responsibilities support and reinforce the rule of law? Using the words of not only President Kennedy, but the words of Aristotle, President Theodore Roosevelt, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., the Mayflower Compact, Justice Brandeis, and Margaret Mead, student essays addressed a number of rights and responsibilities, including protesting to protect and preserve civil rights and our individual rights paying taxes to ensure that all have access to basic human needs, protecting the land and our natural resources, educating ourselves and others to be knowledgeable and empowered, and serving on juries and voting to ensure that the principle of checks and balances remains. The overarching theme of many essays was community, devotion, selflessness, volunteerism, and the social contract. The chance to make a difference for the better. Please join us as we hear the essays from this year's contest winners. May it please the court, Chief Judge Gregory, Circuit Judges, Honored Guests, and all assembled. 
I have the honor and privilege of introducing this year's third place winner of the Fourth Circuit Essay Contest, Eli Bailey. Joining Eli today are his parents, Barbara and Scott Bailey. Eli graduated this past spring from Oakton High School in Vienna, Virginia, where his favorite subjects were math, science, computer science, and government. Now as a freshman at the University of Virginia, Eli plans to major and pursue a career in chemistry. Beyond his academic endeavors, Eli enjoys volunteering at his synagogue, where he has served as a camp counselor at Camp Rodesh Shalom and a teacher's aide at the religious school. Eli also is a volunteer proofreader for Project Gutenberg, which is a digital library dedicated to transcribing public domain works into freely available and widely accessible ebooks. Please join me in welcoming Eli Bailey. In the United States, citizens have a role to carry out both civic duties and responsibilities. While duties such as following the law, paying taxes, and serving on a jury are important, civic responsibilities are what allow democracy to remain intact. Civic responsibilities include voting, staying politically informed, and being active in one's community, all actions that, while not legally required, are essential to an optimal political and democratic environment. One of the key aspects in upholding democracy is the rule of law, a principle stating the importance of accountability under the law for all individuals, no matter their position or status. The civic responsibilities of U.S. citizens reinforce and support the rule of law by ensuring that elected officials are truly representative of the people and that citizens have the knowledge to call out people who are infringing upon the rule of law and its values. The first way in which civic responsibilities bolsters the rule of law is through the election of officials, such that they represent and are held accountable by the people and uphold the rule of law. This is primarily ensured through voting, which is the most impactful of the civic responsibilities. Despite not being legally required, it is drastically important for all citizens to share their voice and vote, and to do so in every election. While certain elections, such as the presidential one every four years, often receive greater media coverage and popularity, it is just as important, if not more, to vote in other elections, such as those for local and state officials. These individuals create public policy that is likely more directly impactful to citizens than that made federally, but they still receive much lesser voter turnout. Even if someone believes they're in a non-competitive state and that a certain party or candidate will easily run away with an election, it is still important to cast a vote to ensure that the true will of the people is heard rather than the will of the louder minority. Voting maintains the rule of law because it ensures that people in office are held accountable. If someone faces no potential repercussions for their actions, then they will act freely and solely attempt to further their agenda. However, by facing elections, they must ensure that they are doing what is best for the people and in a manner that is within the law or else they will be voted out from office and lose their power. Additionally, voting allows officials to be chosen for their merit in maintaining the rule of law, as actions such as legislation and appointees, both key facets of the rule of law, are directly impacted by elected officials. Overall, the civic responsibility of voting drastically affects the reinforcement of the rule of law by ensuring that officials are held accountable and do what they can to defend the rule of law as well. The civic responsibilities of citizens also fortify the rule of law by guaranteeing that the people can call out those who are encroaching on it. Another of the key civic responsibilities is to stay informed, both in terms of community and national issues and information. By staying informed and up to date, citizens are able to act accordingly in a manner that best serves the democratic process. Additionally, informed people are likely to make a more nuanced and thoughtful decision when fulfilling other civic responsibilities like voting. One other aspect of staying informed is allowing others within one's community to stay informed as well. This means performing other civic responsibilities such as tolerance, where a fair and equal opportunity is prevented, presented for all, no matter their demographic status. By doing so, it means that more people have greater access to information, allowing them to stay informed as well, which improves democratic integrity for all involved. Adding on to this, just as important as ensuring information is available to all in a manner that is not discriminatory or exclusive, it is important to pass this information and these values 
such that future generations can uphold these principles as well. Clear and concise information combined with the responsibility to stay informed allows for the law to be public and applied evenly, another portion of the rule of law. The more people are informed, the more they can interpret and denounce violations of the rule of law and open information allows these denouncements to be heard widely and not suppressed. In general, the responsibilities of staying informed and passing on and maintaining open access to information for all allows the rule of law to be properly followed along with the ability to call out those who do not. Overall, the civic responsibilities of citizens in, in the United States tie directly in with the rule of law and both work in tandem to reinforce each other and the principles of democracy within the nation. However, it is lastly important to remember that civic responsibilities are not a one-time action and require persistent effort to follow. For the rule of law to be truly supported, people must consistently vote, stay informed, share and ensure open access to information and more, such that when attempts to infringe upon the concepts of accountability and just and impartial law occur, they can be thwarted and prevented. Thank you. May it please the court. Chief Judge Gregory, Circuit Judges, Fourth Circuit Family, and Honored Guests. I have the honor and privilege of introducing the second place winner of the fifth annual Fourth Circuit Essay Contest, Taylor Cohn. Celebrating this award with her today are her parents, Lori and Joe Cohn. Taylor is a rising senior with the South Carolina Association of Independent Homeschools in Columbia, South Carolina, and has been homeschooled since the eighth grade. She blazed the homeschooling path for her sisters, Erin and Abby, and they all share a love for their two dogs, Duke and Nova. Nova joined the family after their involvement with the group Serve and Connect, which delivers goodie bags to local law enforcement. Nova is a puppy from their local canine unit, and community involvement remains important to Taylor and her family. Along the line of helping others, Taylor plans to become a nurse. She watched her parents' careers as a doctor and a pharmacist and knew she wanted to join the medical field. She realized she could achieve another goal, traveling across the country, if she became a nurse, with the added opportunity to learn about different specialties in the field. Always curious, Taylor follows current events. She wants to understand what the issues are, how they impact the community, and how and why the government works the way it does in our democracy. Apparently, this interest sometimes spills over into debates at the dinner table. So after traveling the country as a nurse, she plans to pursue a graduate degree in politics and public policy. Taylor's undergraduate and graduate plans are grounded in her belief that helping people is something we all need to do. When Taylor is not independently researching topics of interest, she likes to hike in the local state park and on nearby trails. She also enjoys paint by number kits after school every day. It is my pleasure to present Taylor Cohn. Theodore Roosevelt said that the first requisite of a good citizen in this republic of ours is that he shall be able and willing to pull his weight. Truer words have never been spoken. <clears throat> to be a citizen in a free country is an incredible blessing and it is only right that we treat it as such. Even though individual citizens might disagree on the politics of a nation, we know that the responsibilities granted to us as citizens ties together and allow us to cooperate on an individual level to benefit society as a whole. A citizen is one who by birth, nationality of a parent, or naturalization is granted the rights and responsibilities of being a member of a national community. As citizens, we have a few obligations that we must meet to the best of our abilities. These include obeying the laws of the land, paying taxes, and serving on a jury. Obeying local, state, and federal laws and facing the consequences when they are broken allows society to function more smoothly and in a way that benefits all. Paying our fair share of taxes funds social programs, schools, infrastructure, and national defense. This strengthens our communities and allows for more widespread prosperity and security. Jury service and active participation in the judicial process help to ensure accountability to each other, while a trial by jury is designed to try and apply the law evenly across gender, race, religion, and financial background. In addition to the aforementioned obligations, 
we also have multiple civil responsibilities and duties that must be upheld for the preservation of democracy as we know it. Most importantly, citizens must vote. Citizen participation in elections is vital to our government, allowing us to exercise our right to freely choose our leaders. Voting is a right and a privilege, but it is most importantly a commitment that must be filled to ensure that democracy is maintained for future generations. It is a moral obligation that we must uphold. It is how we as citizens can be active in the civic process. Education is critical to having informed citizens who are able to invest back in their communities. Citizens must remain informed of local, state, judicial, national, and international issues in order for us to better our communities. When we know what is occurring in our state, nation, and in the world, as well as knowing who our politicians are and what they stand for, we can better elect those who represent our ideals. The better that we understand these issues affecting our immediate and extended communities, the better we can serve our community and our country. Just as it is impossible to fix a problem if you do not know that it exists, it is equally difficult to provide support for beneficial solutions if you are not educated as to the options. These responsibilities also tie into community involvement, another vitally important civic action available to citizens. Community involvement is maintaining the safety and security of our communities and meeting the needs of the people living in those communities. Empowering our communities, whether through activism, charities, or community development projects, establishes a way for help and change to come directly from the people who benefit from it most. It empowers more people to be more proactive in their lives and communities, leading to safer communities. When people are involved in caring for their community and have personal relationships with others in the community, it reinforces their responsibility to treat others as they would like to be treated and to help others. Citizens are more likely to support the rule of law when educated as to its existence and personally involved to ensure its success. Community involvement is not only beneficial for the community members in the present, but it is highly constructive in regards to the modeling responsible behavior and good character to the younger generation. It is exceptionally important for citizens to encourage and model good citizenship. This is one of our most important responsibilities as citizens and community members. It is inconceivable to have a properly functioning democratic system without committed and responsible citizens. Our job is to be citizens of integrity who hold up the backbone of our democracy. We need to fulfill our moral obligations as citizens, as well as fulfill those we are legally bound by law. Our role in society is among the most important and we must take it seriously. We are responsible for the care and preservation of our society and as citizens, we have an ethical responsibility to do so. This can include putting selfish goals aside and working toward goals that would improve the community at large. It means doing the right things, even when it is hard, investing in others and helping people to achieve more benefits all by leading to the improvement of citizen-led communities. Thank you. May it please the court, Chief Judge Gregory, circuit judges, honored guests, and all assembled. I have the honor and privilege of introducing the first place winner of the fifth annual Fourth Circuit Essay Contest, Huda Hack. Joining Huda virtually today are parents, Mr. and Mrs. Hack. As noted in the program, Huda is a senior at Panther Creek High School in Cary, North Carolina. Among the things listed in the program, Huda is especially proud to have captained the Science Olympiad at Panther Creek. An active member in the community, Huda is involved in many social justice activities. Huda is a member of Panther Creek's track team and is a sprinter, participating in the 100 and 200 meter distances. As an athlete and social justice activist, Huda was especially heartened during this summer's Olympics when Simone Biles and others brought international attention to issues surrounding mental health. In terms of educational goals, Huda plans to pursue a degree in public health and is still in the midst of the college application process. Without further ado, Huda Hack. When the Founding Fathers penned America's Constitution, their primary intention of the United States was to grant unalienable rights to its people in the face of monarchical rule. While this more passive aspect of American citizenship is undeniable, the active responsibilities of citizens have characterized the nation's tenacity and devotion to the rule of law. This principle is the same reflected in John F. Kennedy's famous inaugural call to action, and it is the same one that has continued to reinforce the rule of law in America. 
Perhaps the most obvious responsibilities of citizenship are the mandatory ones. Americans are required to pay their taxes, serve on a jury if summoned, register with the Selective Service, and overall obey all federal and local laws. Adhering to these basic requirements of citizenship not only permits a basic level of peace, but it also promotes equal coordination amongst all Americans. In doing so, citizens prove the efficiency of laws that exercise power uniformly in lieu of a single authority when it comes to maintaining society. Yet, the voluntary responsibilities of citizens also reinforce the rule of law in even more robust manners, especially when they are denied to certain Americans. The duty of voting since the establishment of the country has been fought for by groups such as women and African Americans. For decades, this responsibility was not designated to many Americans, even as they lived as full citizens in their country. However, this duty's roots were found in the basic ideals of democracy, as well as the rule of law, seeing as democracy strives to uphold the equality of all citizens in the representation that it offers. Many women, such as Alice Paul and Lucy Burns, saw their denial to vote as a denial of their status as Americans who contributed to the country. Additionally, African Americans who had been robbed of their 15th Amendment rights as the South circumvented the amendment with poll taxes and grandfather clauses were similarly outraged, with one Georgian in the 1930s stating that he had, quote, never voted in his life and had never been able to express his right as a citizen because of the poll tax. The fact that it was not a mere accessory, but rather an obligation that was being taken away, propelled groups to reinforce the rule of law through activism and protest. Paul and Burns faced imprisonment, physical assault, damaging force feeding, and more in order to push the women's suffrage movement on a national scale, their efforts eventually culminating in increased equality before the law through the 19th Amendment. Additionally, African Americans and organizations, including Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, withstood racist, violent attacks to pressure Congress into passing the Voting Rights Act of 1965, a step towards the elimination of discrimination via the banning of literacy tests and poll taxes against a large portion of citizens under the law. Therefore, the presence of the voting responsibility eventually led to a more just rule of law. Additionally, another onus of citizenship lies within furthering the common good for a community. The concept of a common good may be defined as the achievement of ideals such as happiness and justice for all. A recent example of this duty being carried out can be seen in activism for same-sex marriage. The right to marriage in a publicly recognized relationship can easily be classified one as afforded by the common good. Yet court cases like Baker versus Nelson, which upheld the denial of a marriage license to a gay couple, the passage of anti-LGBTQ marriage bills in over half of the country, the 1993 Don't Ask, Don't Tell DADT bill, which prevented LGBTQ members of the military from serving openly, and the Def Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, which defined marriage as being only between a man and a woman, obstructed this notion for many. As it is a responsibility of citizens to actively pursue the common good for all, many Americans took to the streets in order to challenge this lack of basic rights. In the face of increasing pushback from both major political parties, activists ignored the idea that the rights of LGBTQ Americans were simply for states to decide. And in March of 2009, hundreds of thousands of Americans carried out their responsibility by protesting. The event no doubt resulted in a ripple effect, the main one being that the matter of LGBTQ rights became one of greater importance on the national scale, not an issue to be overlooked. In fact, soon after, both DADT and DOMA were deemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. And on June 26, 2015, same-sex marriage was legalized in Obergefell versus Hodges. 
Clearly, the matter of LGBTQ rights in America was pursued due to an obligation on behalf of its citizens. And as a result, people under the law were held to equal levels of dignity and justice. To be an American citizen allows a person to enjoy many rights. Yet the responsibilities of the citizenship are similarly crucial for ensuring the strength of American law. Primarily, these commitments serve to create a society that may enjoy equity, and in doing so, they ultimately reinforce the rule of law by making it exercise a righteous amount of power among citizens. When observing the relationship between the commitment of an American and the law, it is also pivotal to keep in mind the many Americans who have both dedicated and sacrificed their lives in the name of strengthening this relationship for future generations of citizens, citizens who must never take these responsibilities lightly themselves. Thank you. Eli, Taylor, Huda, thank you so much for your brilliant essays. It reassures me and I think the entire Fourth Circuit family that our nation is in good hands when people like yourselves are still inspiring us and encouraging us to make all of those truths that were self-evident real for all Americans. And you have done that. You've inspired us with the idea that citizenship is about working, it's about responsibility. And in that work, and taking on those responsibilities, that's how we pursue justice. That's how we find the common good. And that's how we find the true purpose of the rule of law. When we started this essay contest to commemorate Constitution Day, we were right. There was no better way to signify our hope and the great force that will lead us into the future than to highlight young students like yourselves. And you have acquitted yourselves so well. Your eloquence and your wisdom and your insights are just phenomenal. Thank you so much. I think about 60 years ago, and sort of a theme we have here is that young president from Boston said that we should not ask what our country will do for us, but what we will do for our country. And you have met that challenge in a remarkable and beautiful way. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and now I say to you, we encourage you to keep doing that. Encouraging you to keep the spirit, the American spirit of constitutional government. On September 17, 1787, when they left those halls, Independence Hall in Philadelphia, someone, I guess you would call a reporter now, but ask Benjamin Franklin, what have you done? What have you wrought for the nation? And he said, we've given you a republic if you can keep it. And your spirit helps us keep it. Thank you so much. Now, for your great work, for your achievement to acknowledge that, you will receive a certificate that expresses on the Fourth Circuit how much we appreciate your hard work, your scholarship, and your tenacity. Also, one of my favorite parts is this. We have a plaque in the Fourth Circuit library, a permanent plaque that will list the names of all the essay winners, perpetually. So when you come back decades later and bring your friends and family, you can say that the role was struck and the tablet has now inscribed your name for all to see in the posterity, the work that you did and the power of your words. And oh, by the way, there's one other thing. Uh, Eli, uh, for your work and receiving the third place, uh, prize for the essay, you will receive $1,000. Taylor, for your work as the second place winner, you'll receive $1,500. And Huda, 
as our first place essay winner, you will receive $2,000. I thought I'd mention that. That might, might be important to you. Spend it wisely, and I know that you will. Uh, so it is wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't think of a better way than to celebrate this wonderful time for our nation than to celebrate you. Stay tuned as we will stroll to uh, recognize the members of the SA uh, Selection Committee who worked very hard and did a great job picking three fabulous winners and also to honor uh, the members of our court. And lastly, a lot of people, and you saw Sarah and you heard other people, there are many people in the court staff have done a wonderful job and I want to say thank you so much for making this possible and making it a wonderful time to celebrate those things we hold dearly. Thank you so much.